Hello, ladies. My name's Leslie Witte, and I am very happy that you have decided to join me for this session of women's work. Um, as always, this will last about 15 to 20 minutes. It's meant to be a short break, uh, sort of a way to recharge, give you some good information to help you as you pursue a new career or re-entry back into the workforce. I'd like to start by giving you a quote. I'm a big quote person and I really like this one. Um, the quote is, that's always seemed so ridiculous to me that people want to be around someone because they're pretty. It's like picking your breakfast cereals based on color instead of taste. And that's true. Um, we tend to focus so much on outward beauty that uh, when, you, when you look at it, big picture wise, outward beauty does not make a lot of difference. Yet as a society, it's something that, that we, we stress and we tend to strive for. So this session will be about beauty in the workplace. Whoop, I'm going to start my timer so I don't go over. Um, beauty in the workplace and hopefully we'll give you some interesting information and uh, some, some suggestions for how you, how you can use this information to your advantage. So diving in we will begin um, by discussing the halo effect. And um, I've include a, included a graphic of Beyonce. You may remember she had a song called Halo. Not exactly the same thing, but the same idea. Um, the halo effect is when we associate someone who we view as attractive as automatically being good. And it happens very often with folks who have celebrity status. If we see them as being attractive, the perception is that they are also good. So they've got an angel halo um, symbolically. And that's known as the halo effect. Um, it's not something that I, I'm saying, oh, this is... This is something that, that, we, that we should all get behind. Uh, it's something that people do. It is human nature. Um, so the halo effect, when we associate goodness with physical beauty. And here are a few more interesting tidbits on physical attractiveness. We tend to perceive, and when I say we, I mean pretty much everyone, um, we perceive attractive individuals overall as generally having more positive personality traits, as being more intelligent, and as being more competent. That, that's not to say that that's correct. That's not to say that it's right. Um, that is to say that as human beings, that is a common perception that people have. Um, if we see someone attractive, oh, they must be good at what they're doing. They, they must be intelligent. It's, it's an assumption. Again, it goes with the, with the halo effect that I mentioned. This next part is especially interesting, I think. Um, Multiple studies have shown that in a court of law, jurors tend to think an attractive person is um, less likely to be guilty. Now think about that. Um, so when you when you see people in courtrooms and uh, the defendant is is dressed up. Um, in a nice dress, in a nice suit, whatever, 
Um, that probably is because of the perception that an attractive person is less likely to be guilty. And again, these are, these are the results of lots and lots of studies. This is not my personal opinion. So what is beauty? When I'm throwing around the word attractive and beauty, physical attractiveness, when you get down to it, how do you actually define beauty? A lot of people would say, well, it is appealing to the eye. You know, it is, it, it, it draws your attention. I see that it is pleasing to my eyes. You know, that, that is beauty. And I agree with that. A big factor when it comes to a person being found as physically attractive it comes down to facial symmetry, and that is how proportionate our features are. And um, if, if they're, they're in proportion to each other. So the more symmetrical a person's face is, the more attractive we view them. And I was interested in seeing, okay, is this accurate? And I tried it out. So here's my next slide. I tried it out on my friend, Ryan Gosling. He's not really my friend. I wish he was, but um, so Ryan Gosling, let's, if you will follow along with me, hopefully you can see my mouse, but the very first picture, that is Ryan Gosling just as is. Um, that is just a straightforward picture that I pulled off, off the internet. Now, um, there are apps you can download. Um, I don't, one's not better than the other, but, but there are apps where you can, you can see how symmetrical your face or someone else's face is. And that, that's what I've used here. So the first picture is just Ryan as is. The second picture is, let's see, I think it's Ryan's left side. So two of Ryan's left facial sides together. And you can see, I mean, he's still an attractive person. Then the third picture is two of Ryan's right side together. So every single picture here you see an attractive person. The third one's a little odd looking, the chin's a little sharp, but still overall, I mean, goodness, that, you know, you've got a lot of symmetry going on here. So that, that tends to, to uh, illustrate the idea that the more symmetrical a face is, the more we view it as being attractive. So I have, I have offered myself up again <laughs> to, to show the other side of the coin. So I use the same app and okay, here, here is my face using the same app that I did on Ryan just a moment ago. So the first photo, this is myself. And I thought, oh, that's, that's not a bad picture. This will be a good picture to use. Hopefully, you know, this won't look too, too awful. And you can see the results. So the second photo is two of my, I think, left sides together. And so you can see I've gotten like a big widow's peak there. And, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of odd looking there. Now, the third picture, oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. My face is not symmetrical. I have, I have come to terms with that. So, you know, I, I am no Ryan Gosling, the female version. Um, but the, these apps are neat. You can, you can take a selfie and just see, see, how proportionate your facial features are. Um, so if, 
if you are like me and you have not been blessed with symmetrical features, uh, and I do not suggest going out and getting lots of work done so that your face will be symmetrical. Um, there are people that do that. And, you know, if they want to do that, if they can afford to do that, that is that is their choice. Um, I fall into neither of those categories. So this what you're seeing right now, that that's that's what I'm working with. Um, so what if you're not blessed with facial symmetry? What can you do to be perceived as more attractive? And again, the reason you're wanting to be perceived as more attractive is because the person who is, who is perceiving you as more attractive is automatically associating good qualities with you. So we're not trying to do anything um, shady or, you know, oh, I'm trying to use my good looks to get a job. No, I, I want to appear um, attractive simply because there are more positive qualities associated with it. And, you know, just like with first impressions, you always want to look your best, do your best in any interaction. But especially when you're trying to get back into the workforce, you want to make a great first impression. So you want to look your best. So here are some tips if you do not have perfect facial symmetry, which I think most of us fall into that category. Here are some things you can do, easy things. Um, to, to sort of help Mother Nature along. Um, the very first suggestion I have is to pull your hair back. And see, I'm not doing that right now. But um, in an interview situation, you want the main focus to be your face. You don't want hair in the way. So you don't have to do a ponytail um, but I would do something to pull, pull your hair away from your face so that the person is not looking at your hair and thinking, oh, I really like her hair. Um, the person is, is tuned into your face and watching your facial expressions and giving you their full attention. Uh, the second photo here, you can see makeup if you watched my session right before this one. It was on makeup and how, um, again, there are presumptions, there are assumptions that go along with makeup. And these, I'm not saying that this is right, um, but this is the reality that we're dealing with. Um, so I would suggest a little bit of makeup just to, just to give you some polish. And again, um, it, it shows that you are taking taking time to present your best self. Uh, so you no need to go overboard, um, but just a little bit to show. Yes, I am. I am making an effort uh, to to look good during this interview. Um, the next photo is of a lot of bracelets and I think that's cool looking, um, but not for a job interview. You do not want to distract the interviewer by jingling jewelry or excessive jewelry. Um, people will start really hyper focusing on those things. So you don't want to give them anything to really distract them. Uh, bottom row, First picture on the bottom row is of a navy. I think it's the top part of a dress. Navy is really the best color to wear in a job interview. It it prom it promotes uh, feelings of strength, confidence, stability, professionalism. I would recommend navy or you know gray, any sort of muted colors. 
you, you know, sometimes I, I wear wild colors and, you know, I, I, that's me. That's a personal expression of, of who I am. I would not do that on a job interview. I would do that after I got the job. Um, but I would not do that in a job interview situation because, again, you want the focus to be you as a person. What do you bring to the table as a person? So what you're doing with with getting your hair back, not wearing a lot of jewelry, wearing muted colors, is you're forcing that person who's interviewing you to pay attention to you, not be distracted by anything else. Um, as far as perfume, I wouldn't wear it. I would wear deodorant, wouldn't wear perfume because sometimes people can be sensitive to odors. So that is considered, you know, an aspect of beauty. Um, wouldn't do perfume just to be safe. Uh, the third picture on the bottom row, see that pretty smile? That is one of the best things you can do is to give genuine smiles. And a genuine smile, you know, if someone's really smiling because you can see it in their eyes. If their eyes change with the smile, then you know it's genuine. So you don't want a fake smile. You don't want to, that, that's not what you're after. But a genuine smile makes everybody look good. So genuine smiling during the interview. Um, shoes, the, the only real suggestion I have with shoes is um, I, I would not wear open toe shoes. It, it looks less professional than closed toed shoes. And something I see um, in, in younger women primarily is they wear heels that are a little bit too high. I wouldn't do that for a job interview. Again, just because you want to be very sure-footed, you don't want to be distracting. And though, I mean, to me, they're very hard to walk in. So you don't want to look like you're walking weird if you're wearing really high heels. So those are just a few suggestions. These are things you can do. You know, you can't change if your face is asymmetrical, but you can do these easy things um, to enhance your physical appearance for the sake of a job interview. Um, I am curious as to what you're thinking. If you have found this information to be useful, if it is interesting, if it is beneficial, if you have have questions or comments. If you have signed in for the webinar itself, you can type comments or questions in the chat section. If you are watching just the video presentation, I would encourage you to send me your comments. Um, my email address is leslie, L-E-S-L-I-E, at southcentralworkforce.com. And um, I would also recommend signing up for these sessions. That way you don't miss one. Um, and we can communicate through email as well. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, today's challenge is to test your symmetry. Um, download one of those apps. If you type in symmetry, uh, you can I'm sure tons will come up. You can try one and try a free one and then delete it when you're done. Or, you know, if you like it, keep it on your phone. But it's it's to me, it was very interesting. It was very humbling, to be honest. Um, so test your facial symmetry. What's next? Uh, complete the challenge and see I put Ryan and myself side by side. We're friends forever. Um, so complete the challenge, uh, register for a webinar, one of these mini sessions, or email me. I have my email again right there. And please tell others about these sessions. 
These are free. They are designed to give you some good information in bite-sized portions. Um, hopefully you can work those into a workday break or whatever, you know, a, a break during your day. And they don't take too much time, but uh, the information is hopefully helpful. And finally, I would encourage you to follow us on social media at SCKYWDB. And uh, that's our handle on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, and it stands for South Central Kentucky Workforce Development Board. But um, I try to and I do all the social social media for the board. And I try to keep it interesting. You can also find updates. We'll let you know of upcoming sessions uh, such as these and on other topics. But I thank you for spending some time with me today. I just realized I have my reading glasses on top of my head. Probably something I should have checked before I started. But that's okay. They're symmetrical. Huh. Um, but thank you again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again and definitely shoot me an email. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. Thank you so very much. We'll see you again next time.